Hello everybody and welcome to another installment of the Cascadia Clip installation tutorial video series. I'm Michael Bousfield, Technical Director at Cascadia Windows and Doors. Uh, if you haven't viewed at least the first introductory video of this series, we encourage you to go back and do that before this one. It'll set the stage as to why there's importance on thermally improved cladding support systems in exterior insulated uh, cladding assemblies today. Uh, one of the th things that you'll find in all of these thermally improved product types, including our company's one, the Cascadia Eclipse, is that they're made of low conductivity material for the purpose of reducing thermal bridging. And that brings up an important point about testing and engineering, and that is the fire safety of any of these types of components because they're intended for use in non-combustible walls. So if that's what you're interested in, you've come to the right video. I'm gonna to talk to you about the testing and evaluation of this component. I'm gonna pick on our own company's components, but generically speaking, uh, this information is fairly interchangeable from brand to brand. Now, our focus is to avoid this. And this is the unfortunate disaster of the Grenfell Tower in London. Um, it's a terrible photo, terrible tragedy. Uh, however, br bringing, it, bringing it up in this discussion is to land on the point that we don't have to choose between fire safety and energy efficiency. We can have both. And the story that our company experienced when we, when we developed the design of a fiberglass space that was going to go uh, within a non-combustible cladding support system is that from starting from engineering analysis, and thinking about fire performance, we wanted and knew that it was necessary to have a spacer that was acceptable for use in, number one, a wall that is for non-combustible construction, and number two, even permitted, despite the use of combustible cladding, like a, like an uh, aluminum composite a panel or, or other such materials. And then of course, the same product uh, would be great to be able to use in combustible construction and you, you would get that anyway uh, if you get non-combustible. And so when we studied this approach, any such spacer needs to maintain two code objectives and two common sense objectives, which are very fortunately one and the same in this scenario. Uh, and those objectives are that the use of the spacer cannot alter the intended fire performance of that non-combustible wall. And it doesn't need to make it better, but it cannot make it worse. It really needs to be kind of invisible in terms of the fire performance. And even if the component is compromised, the cladding stay in place capability has to be maintained no matter what. Uh, when we're talking about this Cascadia clip example itself, the first of those two objectives is sort of clear by analysis. You can just by observation, you can look at the details in the design, but you can further support and validate that by testing as well. Uh, number two is clear by observation, the cladding stay in place capacity exists because there is a non-combustible connection within that cladding support system. And that is a metal to metal to metal support system using continuous screws. And I'll, I'll touch on that a little later when I have a detail to expand upon it. Now, the story behind code compliance and testing that resulted in broad approval for this component and really compo some components like it uh, started with our company retaining a code consultant to go to uh, a rehabilitation project. And the code consultant talked with a city official and said, uh, here is our engineering solution. And the city official says, well, we accept that, but it says this is a novel product and you won't want to have to go through this uh, rigmarole on every project. And, and we said, great, let's uh, submit this for review by the Building Code Appeal Board, the highest building code authority in the province that our company is located in, British Columbia, Canada. And they looked at the product and they published a ruling that said, this is a minor combustible component, a term for such allowable components used in a non-combustible wall, and it's a Canadian building code term, and the product is safely used and uh, referred, is referred to as a minor combustible component throughout its use in Canada. And in America, where we wanted to give the market the same opportunity to use this technology, the building code didn't have the term. It had the same types of components and the same logic, but it didn't have the term. So we retained a code evaluation agency, IAPMO, to develop a more extensive evaluation report and conclude basically the same thing. 
And from a fire performance perspective, they basically said, this thing is a washer. It's a complicated shim. It has a metal cladding support on the outside, a metal screw attaching it directly through to a metal stud behind. Even if it burnt, even if it got damaged, there's no chance the cladding can detach because it's a metal connection. But anyway, let's spend some money and test it and burn down a big wall. And we did all of those things, which I'll share some photos of in just a second. I wanted to summarize first that in the United States, as a result of this code evaluation effort, uh, the, the first and still one of the few uh, complete reports, third-party reports exist for designers and code authorities alike to use in reference to this type of product. It approves that Cascadia clip spacer for use in all construction types, um, and it's, it's recognized across all of the United States. Um, to conclude here, here are some of the fun photos that occur during a large-scale test, even with combustible cladding, which I'll add for the good of the cladding manufacturer, turned out well, and they're their material performed well. Um, this violent looking but ultimately very successful demonstration of safe fire performance resulted in us being able to deconstruct the wall and examine the cladding support components, including the worst affected component, the Cascadia clip, right at the window opening of this test. And it uh, maintained its integrity. It was pretty barbecued. Uh, didn't look very good, didn't smell very good, but it still functioned fine, and it was the worst case one in the wall. So as a result of that test and the evaluation that we were engaged in, we were able to conclude that from a fire performance perspective, the use of this type of spacer does nothing and doesn't really change anything at all, for better or for worse. The fire performance of a wall is governed by other things. To take that one step further and leave you all with a, a convenient reference, for American uh, users of this type of component, this is now one of the two approaches included in, to, in an Intertech published listing of exterior insulated cladding support systems or layers that can be added to any NFPA 285 uh, required cladding system where there is an existing test in place for the cladding material, but that does not have an exterior insulated layer behind it. Now, either of these two choices can be added to that NFPA 285 report without triggering retesting. Uh, and the, the insulation material and the buildability of the one on the right has been, uh, it is the Cascadia clip and it's been favored by a number of uh, builders and, uh, and people that have budgeted out these two assemblies as well. So. Thank you for joining us, and if you want more tips and tricks on how to install and shorten the, uh, the time and increase your efficiency using these components, please look into other videos in this series. Thanks again.